We thank you for your forgiving spirit, Lord, your long suffering. We thank you, Lord, for being a faithful high priest, oh God. We thank you, Lord, dear Jesus, for stretching your hands out and giving us the blessings of every day. We thank you for life and breath on today. We thank you for your blood that gives us life and breath. Lord, we thank you for all of the spiritual blessings you have given us. We thank you for food and sustenance. We thank you for peace in our lives, dear God. We thank you for your grace and mercy, dear God. We are praying for this entire world, dear God, that belongs to you. You're the father of us all. We are praying for war-torn nations. Dear Lord, we are praying for those that are running for their lives. Dear God, we are praying for those without food and sustenance, those that are in desperate situations, that you would send your angels, oh God, in mercy, hallelujah, to deliver right now in the name of Jesus those that are resisting against blood Christians, hallelujah, oh God, that are having problems in many nations, dear God. We are praying for those in crises, Lord. Those are in troubled situation, Lord, dealing with the violence of this earth. Lord, we do pray for broken hearts, and we pray for bereaved families that have great losses. Lord, right now, we pray for those that are in critical condition in hospital facilities, those with chronic illnesses on bed of afflictions. Lord, we ask that you would bind the infirmity of sickness, Lord, and by your stripes we are healed. Everyone that looks to you, that looks up, hallelujah, Hallelujah to the cross. Let them be healed and delivered in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are praying for prodigal sons and prodigal daughters and lost sheep and backsliders. Oh, shanamase, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Have mercy on them, oh God. Hallelujah. Those that have fallen away, oh God. Those that have become discouraged, Lord. Those that deal with oppression and depression. Lord, illnesses of the mind. Oh, Satan, the Lord rebuke thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for the hard situations, the impossible situation, the situations no one can move. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we ask that you would move the mountain in the name of Jesus. Lord, you're able to do all things. Hallelujah. Oh, God, and for this cause, we bring you, Lord, all of our problems and our petitions in the name of Jesus. We come before the fires of the altar in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we hold on to the horns of the altar. Shendabo, sandara, sanda, shanda. Oh, God, we're praying right now that you would bring peace in the homes, hallelujah, that are disrupted, oh, God. We pray that you would send your angels, hallelujah, to assist those, hallelujah, that are in the kingdom. Oh, God, we pray, hallelujah, that you would send your spirit among us, hallelujah, because the presence of your spirit, hallelujah, there will be healing and deliverance on today. Lord, don't let these people leave the same way they came. Uh, oh, God, hallelujah, give them blessings. Oh, God, give them healings and deliverances. Uh, Lord, give them answers for their problems in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we pray for everybody on Facebook that has requested prayer. Uh, oh, God, everyone that has requested prayer over the New Vision Dunamis prayer line. Uh, those that have requested prayer one to another in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we know that you won't miss one. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we know that you can open up your hand and satisfy the de uh, desire of every living thing. Uh, oh, God, we thank you because you're almighty. We thank you because you're all powerful. And right now, Lord, we are expecting a miracle in the name of Jesus. Uh, we are expecting our prayers to be answered. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we are like a pelican on the rooftop, Jesus. Uh, we're not going to let you go until you bless our souls in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we've come to worship and to praise and exalt you on today, Lord. Oh, God, you are the center of our lives. Hallelujah. Lord, you are the center of the universe. Hallelujah. And we will praise thee and magnify thee all the days of our lives. Uh, let every heart say amen. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody say it is so in Jesus' name. It is so in Jesus' name. We believe that we will receive. How many came to lift Jesus? How many feeling good in Jesus' name this morning? Anybody just feeling good in your soul? feeling good in your body, 
Anybody not feeling good in your body? If you're next to somebody who said they're not feeling good in their body, come on, tell them you're in the right place at the right time this morning. <laughs> you're in the right place at the right time because before you leave, you're going to be feeling way, way, way better. Come on, you got to tell them, tell them. Come on, let's rejoice with our brothers and sisters right now. We're going to give God a, a, a yet praise right now for those that are not feeling good. We're going to praise them in advance for healing in the atmosphere in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's always a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I'm just happy to be here this morning. Um, come on and praise the Lord with your brother and sister. Tell them praise the Lord. Tell them you look good. You look good. Come on, tell them praise the Lord. This is a, this is a social church. <laughs> this is a close, tight, family-knit type of a church. We are all brothers. We are all sisters. We are all family. Praise the Lord online if you're on YouTube and Facebook. Come on, praise the Lord with your brothers and sisters. Go ahead and drop a praise the Lord in the comments. And I'm just happy. I'm ready to lift Jesus. I'm ready to praise him. We got good weather this morning. It's sunny. I said, oh, this is a great day to praise the Lord. Well, really, any day is a great day to praise the Lord. But I woke up feeling good. I saw that sun shining through the window. And I said, I'm going to lift Jesus up with everything I got. Anybody with me on that one? You're with me on that one? Yeah, I see you. I see you. That means we're going to have a high time in the Lord. Come on, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to ask our chief mother if she'll come greet us at this time. Everybody, just put your hands together. Show some love for our chief mother and tell her, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I feel good, good, good. I feel good, so very good. Every time I think about Jesus, I feel good. I feel good. He asked a question. Anybody feel good? Amen. I feel good this morning. Oh, Lord, I began to think about Jesus suffering with a passion this morning. And it makes you want to just cleave more closer to him. And I, been, I woke up this morning, I rolled, rolled out of my bed, I began to thank the Lord. Oh, why are you so happy? I tell you, this is a season that looked like to me, God draws me closer. And what I'm happy about, uh, about a lot of people's ashamed of they, at their age, the Lord spared me to see 82 years. 82 years! I said 82 years young. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord this morning, for he is good. Oh, Lord, yes, I feel good. I don't know how you all feel this morning, but I feel like going on. I feel like digging deeper. I feel like going higher. Let us go higher in the Lord. I was thinking about yesterday we missed our pastor and uh, our assistant pastor in church school, but we had a time. Uh, the words in the uh, lesson were so touching. And at the end of the uh, uh, lesson, uh, we get, we're getting ready to close the class. Uh, I think it was uh, Kansas City. Two or three of them began to speak in other tongues. I just thank the Lord. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I thank God for the things that he has in store for us that's going to draw us closer. And we're going to have higher heights and deeper depths in him. But if you feel bad this morning, I want to tell you, look up. Somebody said, you said it all the time. Don't look down. That's when the enemy going to get us. Hallelujah. And if you're sick this morning, think about this. <clears throat> oh, yes, this is a season that Jesus died and suffered. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. And the chastise of our peace was upon him. Think about it. And by his strength, we are healed. Oh, Lord, every beating they put on her, on him, we are healed. Oh, I thank the Lord for my little place in him. 82 years old. I wonder if I know that in four years, I don't look the same that I looked when I had my husband. But I wonder how... <laughs> Will I look today if he could see me? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. But, I, I'm, you know, I know he's gone, and I'm going to say this here. I'm still in love with him. Pray for him. Oh, Lord. Say, Lord, speak. 
uh, love is stronger than death. Yes. Oh, yes. So pray for me. I, I'm intending. I'm excited. I'm excited about what is going on during this meeting, uh, this season, this time of the year, and how it's going to take us higher, higher in the Lord. That's how we stay safe, saints of the Most High God. I want to let you know that I love every one of you all. Hallelujah. And pray for me. Because I'm, I'm no ways tired, and I'm not going to turn back. Pray, my sweet. Amen. Thank you for those words. Thank you for those words. Did anybody come to uh, lift up Jesus? Did you come to celebrate the king? Now, I'm just going to say this because we had our bowling fellowship yesterday. <laughs> I see a few of y'all that were here. And every time I scored a strike, everybody cheered with everything. <laughs> I think I only got one strike. I'm just playing. But we had a lot of energy in the bowling alley. Every time somebody did something good, I can say that. Everybody was cheering for them and patting them on their back. Some of the kids was jumping around doing secret handshakes and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, we can't give each other more praise than we came to give God. So I'm going to ask you again, did anybody come to lift up the name of Jesus? Because we're going to lift him up together. How many know this is the day that the Lord has made? Somebody say, this is the day that the Lord has made. If you came to praise him, come on, jump on your feet. Get ready to lift them with us. Come on, put your hands together. If your neighbor's not praising, come on, look at him and say, you got to praise him to be on my road. We came to lift up Jesus. Come on, put your hands together. Yeah. 
that made me laugh. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord, that the Lord, has, the Lord has made. Oh, that the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Oh, I will rejoice. And I will and be glad in it. Oh, I will be glad oh, in it. Oh, oh, oh.
Come on, somebody give God a great shout. If you can't find nobody Hallelujah. like Jesus, now come on, look over to your neighbor next to you and say, will you bless the Lord with Hallelujah. me today? Come on, tell him, will you bless the Lord with me today? Come on, let's keep lifting them. Yay. Yeah. Oh, come on, put your hands together like this. I want to invite you to bless the Lord with me. Come on, tell your neighbor, I want you to bless the Lord with me. Yeah, bless the Lord with me. Come on, will you bless the Lord with me? Everybody bless the Lord with me. Come on, everybody, say bless the Lord. Bless the Lord with me. Yeah, that's what I came to do. Did bless you come to bless the Lord with me? Yeah, bless, bless the Lord with me. Bless the Lord with bless me. Bless yeah. the Lord with now, me. Now come on, let's lift up the highest praise. Say. Hallelujah. We come to sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Your hand with me. Hey. Come on, clap. Hey, clap your hand with me. Oh, we gonna clap our hands for the Lord. Yeah. Clap before the Lord. Everybody, clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Clap your hands with me. Yeah. Come on, clap your clap hands with me. Your yeah. hands with me. Clap your hands Clap with me. Clap your hands with me. Now come on, say hallelujah. Hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Now we're going to sing it a little bit higher. And we're going to dance before. Dance before the Lord. Come on, anybody go dance before the Lord. Come on, everybody. Dance before the dance Lord. Before the Come Lord. Come on, dance like David this morning. Yeah. Dance before the now Lord. Now let's take it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, give them everything we got. Hallelujah. Come on, where two or three are gathered in my name. Hallelujah. He said I'll be in the midst. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's take it high. Everybody say, clap your hands with me. Clap your hands Come on, turn to me. your neighbor. Say, do you dance with me? Do you dance with me? Will you do you dance with me? Do you dance with me? Come on, nigga, praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Come on, just wave your hands. Everybody, praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Will you praise the Lord with me? One more time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, everybody say hallelujah. We sing hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more time we say hallelujah. Now come on, somebody shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about you, but I love to praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor now and say, I enjoyed praising the Lord with you. I enjoyed blessing the Lord with you. There's something about the gathering of the saints together. There's something about it. When you praise the Lord with your brother and your sister, it just helps to restore you. It just feels good. Doesn't it feel good? Doesn't it feel good to be amongst God's people, amongst your brothers and sisters? You know, we walk through life. And sometimes as a Christian, sometimes we're persecuted for our beliefs. But when you come into the house of the Lord, this is a safe haven. This is a safe place. I'm just happy that this is a safe place where I can be free to be me. <laughs> I can be free to believe. Anybody feel that with me? Amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together. 
and give God a praise. Actually, let's rest on our feet and give God a praise for our assistant pastor and our leading lady. As she comes, somebody shout praise the Lord, Evangelist Burrell. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. He's worthy. Praise the Lord, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord on today. And we thank God, amen, for being our God. Amen. He is our Heavenly Father. Amen. And that is just such, you know, um, a great peace for me. Mm. I thank you, Lord Jesus. We give an honor to the great spirit of Jesus Christ, who's the head of my life. We honor our pastor, Bishop Burrell. Amen. We thank God for our chief mother. Amen. She's 82 today. Amen. We thank God for that. Amen. We have a, a number of octogenarians, people 80 and over in our congregation, and it's really beautiful. Amen. We need to wish them a happy birthday and bless them. <laughs> you know I got you. Amen. We thank God for it. It's just a special blessing. Amen. And um, we thank God for all of our deacons, saints, and friends, and um, all of our ministers, everyone in the house of God, ushers, everybody, everybody. It takes everybody. Amen. Truly, it's just good to be here. I thank God for um, our Sunday school lesson on yesterday. Uh, such a beautiful lesson talking about, amen, Passover with the king. That's where we are right now. Hallelujah. And we're getting ready to go into the passion. And, you know, we will have our Easter on, on next Sunday. But it's just, you know, a very emotional time, amen, for those that love the Lord to um, track, you know, his uh, death, burial, and resurrection. For he brought the greatest gift that man could ever receive. Amen. And that is eternal life through his blood. We thank him. Amen. But um, at this scene, the Passover with the king, Jesus reveals that uh, someone is going to betray him in his inner circle. Oh, God, I thank you right now. Amen. Um, you know, uh, I, I just love the word of God because there's something in there to help us all the time. And it's something in there um, to take us above uh, what normal people do. But in the kingdom of God, it takes us to a place uh, where we can be like our Savior. And that just gets the attention of the world. Here we see Jesus faced with a betrayer. And uh, in our lives, we will have those that will betray us. Yes, we will. We will have those that are close and they will hurt us. And, and just break us down and, and just squeeze our heart. <laughs> it's, and if you haven't experienced it, it's coming. Uh, um, but it's just what it is down here. Um, but I thank God for, this has always been an inspiration for me, uh, the way that Jesus dealt with Judas. Uh, he had blessed him to be a bishop, blessed him to be in his inner circle, and he was carrying the bag of money. And, you know, Jesus... Jesus had put his trust into him. And he, you know, it's, it's really something. Because people, uh, I find that's one of the things that people fall apart on must, on, on the, uh, fall apart on the most, is rejection and, and betrayal. It's hard and it's tough. And especially when it's from someone that is close to you. It, it's just hard to process. Amen. But I thank God for the Lord bless me to... Uh, to be baptized in Jesus' name as in elementary school. And, you know, it, it does something for the children, for young people. It gives you a special knowledge and wisdom when you come in early. It's a beautiful thing because you're going to avoid a lot of pitfalls that the devil has for you. And when you teach your children in your home when you're saved, and you pray with them and you make sure that they go to Sunday school and they partake of the Bible, they hear these stories. And I thank God for how it prepared me for a lot of the things that I ran into in school and in college. Amen. And the devil wasn't able to do what he planned to do because of the Lord being in my heart and spirit. Truly, God is a protecting God. And his word isn't just for us to learn and memorize, but it activates in our lives. Amen. And we can walk on it and we can stand on it. And when we're in the furnace, we can declare it and we will not feel the heat. 
amen, that Satan has tried to put on us. We won't burn, hallelujah. We won't consume, amen, and you will, people will be shocked, amen, because they expected you to be destroyed, but my God, you won't be destroyed. You will be preserved, hallelujah. Oh my God, hallelujah. And I experienced it going through school so many times. Plots and conspiracies set up against me, hallelujah. But the Lord delivered me out of all of them. Oh my God, Judas was sitting at that table. The Lord said, somebody's going to betray me. And all the apostles were very sorry. And they were, they were shocked and they were moved by this. And they were all saying, Lord, is it I? And Judas had the audacity to sit there and say, Lord, is it I? And he knew he had planned uh, uh, the destruction of him. He had planned his murder. He had plotted against him. And you know the devil is bold. He will sit right by you and pretend to be your friend. He will sit right by you and pretend to be your cuff buddy. Amen. But if you're reading the word of God, and if you're trusting in the word of God, you are never going to be deceived. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, I thank you right now. That story is so deep and moving. But, you know, uh, they, they wanted to know who is it, Lord, because they truly didn't know. And a lot of times people are, are without, uh, they're just without that knowledge. They don't realize who is right up on their, their heels. We see all these stories on crime stories sometimes, and they never understand that it's the people right next door. It's the people closer than they're thinking, my God. They're thinking it's somebody in another state, and it's somebody you're looking at every day. Praise God. Hallelujah. But you know the story stands, and the Lord said, it's, it's he who has his hand in the dish dipping with me. That's how close Judas was. And I don't care how small you make your group, your circle, there's always a Judas among you. Why? Because Satan fills the heart. Amen. And sometimes people are stricken with jealousy and envy and rage and all those things that are in the world. The Lord said, in those days, you know, these days, people would be covenant breakers, truce breakers. They make you a promise. They don't care anything about it. Uh, they're not loyal, he said. Oh, Shandia Bosa. People are not loyal anymore. They don't care anything about their word. Uh, but it used to be a time when people told you something, they, they meant it. But now they'll tell you something to dismiss you right away. And you'll never see it. And they never meant to do it because they're not loyal. And, uh, you know, th this is what God himself dealt with when he came into the earth. And he's letting us know it's down here. It's down here, but I love the point that he never stopped his mission, and that's a point in case for us. We can't stop doing what we've got to do on this earth, what we've been called to do, what we've been commissioned to do by God, and who, who we are as people. You don't let people stop you from your goals. You don't let people that close to you where they're making decisions for you. Judas wasn't making those kind of decisions, and the Lord dismissed him. After he uncovered him, he dismissed him, and he went on to do what he had come to the earth to do. Don't you stop, my brothers and sisters. Your uh, enemies might get in your path. <laughs> your enemies and your betrayers, they may come against you, but know that you have something to do, and you don't have time to be caught up in the mess. Keep on moving. What did Jesus do when Judas finally came upon him with the police and with the soldiers and he kissed Jesus? Jesus called him friend. Hallelujah. Isn't he telling us something? We don't have to throw a rock or buy a gun. Hallelujah. He called him friend. Why? Oh, because he hadn't, he hadn't stopped anything. He hadn't messed up the mission. God still did what he was going to do. He brought that blood so that we could be a part of him. And we have to understand when we mature in God, this is strong meat. It is. But this is where we are in our lesson. Everybody can't digest it. But you're going to have to realize that when it, that devil comes upon you, you got to keep it moving. 
Amen. You can't get all caught up in it and try to start fighting it because you're not fighting flesh and blood. It's spirits and principalities that you're fighting. Powers of darkness, rulers of darkness. It's dominions you're fighting. And you don't have time to be using carnal weapons. You've got to use the weaponry of God. Amen. And that love is a powerful thing. It was so powerful that Judas said, I betrayed the innocent blood. And he went out and hung himself. My God. Point. You don't have to kill Judas. Judas will hang himself. Oh, Shebos. That was a word, a loaded word. <laughs> you don't have to kill Judas. Judas is going to hang himself. You don't got to worry about people who are backstabbing you, talking about just spreading lies and rumors. You know God's going to. You ever seen somebody that, that, that came at you like that and you said, Lord, I'm going to just love on them. You take care of them for me. I'm going to just love on them. You ever just look back a few years later and see what their life is like? See, you don't have to fight. You, listen, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard. You don't have to do anything. Pray for them. Pray for them that God will have mercy on them because you can't mess with a child of God. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Somebody just say, Lord, I don't want to be Judas. See, that's a self-reflecting moment because see, this flesh right here, this flesh right here will mess you up. We got to get that, keep that flesh under subjection because see, you may not care about what this person is doing or what this person has, but there's something that you desire that somebody has. And that jealousy will creep into your heart so quick. Uh, when you become ambitious, there's things that you want to accomplish, things that maybe you wanted to accomplish and you feel like it was too late and you see somebody doing what you wanted to do your whole life, that jealousy will creep in. And you know, the grass always looks greener on the other side. You looking at your grass, you like, man, that grass just looks so bright. <laughs> but tell somebody, don't cover that other person's grass. Don't be Judas. Don't be Judas. First of all, don't be Judas. And when Judas comes after you, don't retaliate. <laughs> amen. Amen. Who's ready for the word this morning? That was like the appetizer right there that we just got. You ever eat too much appetizer? <laughs> you ever eat too much appetizer, then your food come. As soon as they sit it down, you're like, can I have a to-go container, please? I'm going to just save this and eat on it later. <laughs> She first lady done filled me halfway up already, but that's all right, because I'm kind of greedy. So listen, when I eat, <laughs> I eat the appetizer. My wife's like, you always want dessert. <laughs> I, can't, I can't go to the restaurant, eat a good meal, and not get dessert. I can be stuffed full, and I got to order my dessert. She's telling the waitress, to go, please. I'm like, can I get my brownie right now? Heat it up really hot with the ice cream. I need that now. So I said all that to say, I'm greedy. Anybody else greedy in here? Good, because we ate that appetizer, a little piece of the meal. But now we're going to get the main course, the dessert. Some of y'all like coffee and stuff with your dessert after the meal. Come on, rest on your feet. Put your hands together. Give God a praise for the bishop, the leader of this house. And somebody shall preach the word, bishop. microphone that might help praise the lord to everyone put your hands together and give the lord a hand everybody if you love the lord on today on this palm sunday come on give god some praise give him the highest praise what is the highest praise hallelujah one more time hallelujah one more time hallelujah god bless you you may be seated in the presence of the lord it is good be here on today and you've already greeted everyone on your roll amen that's wonderful amen no strangers in the house of the lord but we're all brothers and sisters amen uh, we're all the family of god he has brought us together from the north south east and the west from all different 
backgrounds, ethnicities, and he has uh, put his name on us. Can the church say amen uh, for the whole church in heaven and in earth uh, shall bear his name. And that's why when we are at the marriage feast of the Lamb, after the culmination of the seven years of tribulation and uh, the second coming of the Lord in the battle of Armageddon and the white throne of judgment, amen, the fullness of time, can we say the fullness of time? Then there will be the marriage feast of the Lamb. And John the Revelator said that I saw a new heaven and a new earth in which dwelt righteousness. Amen. And so we have to, we're going to be a part of the marriage feast of the Lamb uh, between, amen, the groom, who is the Lord Jesus Christ, and the bride, uh, which is the church. Amen. The Ecclesia, the called out ones, uh, the church consists of all of those that uh, met the requirements of God through all of the dispensations of time, all the way from Adam uh, uh, through uh, the church age, which is the age we're in now. Uh, there's been 2,000 years uh, from the triumphant entry, which is we are celebrating today when Christ came in on uh, the month of April. In the Hebrew, it is Abib or Nisan. Uh, he came in on the ninth day and he was crucified on the 14th day. Uh, and uh, so we will uh, be married to the Lord, all of those in the church all those that met the requirements of God in their dispensation, whether it be innocence, uh, whether it be conscience, uh, whether it be human government, or uh, whether it be promise, a dispensation of promise, or the dispensation of law or grace. The church, can we say the church? Amen. will bear his name. Even those that come through great tribulation, where the Lord says there'll be at least seven years of tribulation. And I'll be touching on that today in our lesson. Uh, and those that will give their lives after the rapture of the church, um, the uh, perusia in the Latin, the catching away, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. Uh, all those that miss the rapture and they will not bow to the Antichrist. And I believe the Antichrist is already in the world. Antichrist is also called the man of sin. Uh, it's called the son of perdition. Called the beast. Uh, those are all names of the Antichrist who will be the world dictator. And we're headed in that direction. Can the church say man? We're headed in that direction with world currency. And I hope you're paying close attention to current events, uh, what's going on uh, in the world spectrum, uh, and with the aggressive uh, things that Russia is doing on the eastern, in the eastern hemisphere, uh, and the Russian currency, the ruble, and what is going on with the gold gold and the ruble and what it's doing to currencies in other nations God's wrapping it up but you have to have his name I, that's my whole point you have to take on his name you can't be in the marriage unless you take on his name I know our society now they're, they're trying to change everything because uh, in the United States of America in Christian uh, uh, countries uh, they do things according to the Bible. Court system is set up according to the Bible. And things are set up according to the Bible. Even the marriage ceremonies are set up, somebody say, according to the Bible. Uh, the woman takes on the man's name. That's, that's typical of the Bible. The church, you cannot 
being the marriage feast of the Lamb, unless you have Christ's name. What's his name? Jesus. Uh, uh, you, it's not going to help you if you got titles. Father's not a name. Son's not a name. Holy Ghost is not a name. I'm a father. I'm a son. And then I'm a pastor. I'm a retired school teacher. But that's not my name. And when I sign checks, I don't sign father. Can I get an amen? And so you have to have his name. Uh, and it's just as plain as the nose on all of our faces. Uh, so he came for a purpose, as Lady Burrell said, and protocol has already been established. Uh, we do reverence our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we do give honor to whom honor is due. And we uh, give uh, our love to the saints of the Most High God. Thank God for the fellowship on yesterday. Put your hands together for that fellowship. I had intended him to make it uh, to that fellowship, even though we had a funeral in the morning, which caused me to miss Christian education. I love Christian education, um, but I did study my lesson. Amen. I was ready, uh, and uh, but we had a beautiful time together in fellowship we had about 40 people uh, there and I think we shocked the bowling alley <laughs> uh, somebody said they wasn't ready for new vision <laughs> amen and uh, uh, we had a great time in the Lord uh, and uh, thank God for all of you uh, that participated young and old we had the little children bowling and, and uh, senior citizens bowling amen we got a chance to have a little fun amen with the saints of the most high god we're going to share a word today happy birthday mother moore put your hands together for mother moore Happy birthday <laughs> amen she sure don't look her age does she <laughs> that's what that, the word of the lord says that he would beautify the meek with salvation Amen. And uh, uh, people will tell you when they see you after so long and you looking good. And they say, whatever you're doing, girl, whatever you're doing, man, keep doing it. Uh, it's working. Amen. So we do appreciate her and we thank God for her uh, and uh, how the Lord is using her here. St. Matthew's chapter 21 is our text and to uh, conserve on the time. We're going to be referencing verses 1 through 11 here in this particular text, which well, we're just going to read verse 5, which corresponds to Zechariah chapter number 9. And we're just going to read those two particular scriptures that we've been dealing with in our uh, class, our Tuesday night class. It's been wonderful, hasn't it? Uh, we've been dealing with, it is finished, uh, and all of the prophecies that have been fulfilled uh, and were fulfilled in a 24-hour period uh, from the time of Gethsemane to the time that Jesus went to the cross all of the prophecies in the Old Testament concerning his coming thousands of years before he came had to be fulfilled. Everything that was uh, foretold in the Old Testament had to be fulfilled. Amen. Everything that the prophets had foretold had to be fulfilled. Everything was fulfilled in a 24-hour period of time uh, from the time that he was betrayed in the Garden of Gethsemane there in the Mount of Olives uh, to the time that he was crucified. And so we're going to read Matthews 21 and 5. If you have to say amen, read it with me. Tell ye daughter of Zion, that's Israel, behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, sitting on an ass, and a colt, 
the foal of an ass. Now, Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9 is the Old Testament prophecy. All right, let's read. Zechariah is right in there. It's one of the minor prophets only because it's a shorter book. A major minor prophets doesn't mean one's more important than the other. It just means that the length of the book is shorter. Zechariah, which is right there before Malachi, uh, the last book of the Old Testament. And then there's 300 years between Zechariah and Matthew. All right, Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9. What, how does it read? Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, shout, O daughter of Jerusalem, behold, thy king cometh unto thee. Gives a little more on him. He is just, having salvation, lowly, that's humble, and riding upon an ass, upon the coat, the foal of an ass. Lord, bless us today, we pray. Give us ears to hear what you have to say. Hallelujah. Without you, we can do nothing. We're leaning and depending on you. We need a word today. Mm. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. The blood of Jesus is against you right now. Plead the blood. With your stripes, we're healed. We're under the blood. In the name of Jesus. Bless us, Lord, right now. Oh, we thank you in advance, Lord God, for this word that will be a refreshing to us. Now, Lord, bless this thy servant in my tongue maybe is a pen of the ready writer. We ask it in Jesus' name. All the people said, amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We're just going to talk. Amen. You can clap your hands. That's good. We're going to talk about Hosanna. Can we say Hosanna? Amen. We used to sing a song, Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Hosanna. Blessed be the rock. Blessed be the rock of my salvation. Amen. That was one of the choir songs. I love singing in the choir. Amen. One time I was singing in three choirs at one time singing in the radio choir, I was singing and directing in the pastor's choir, uh, and I was also uh, singing uh, in the mass choir, uh, and uh, every Sunday there was a different choir, and one Sunday they had the male chorus, Christ Temple Lairs, they had their Sunday, and the inspirational choir had their Sunday. That was the youth choir. And the pastor's choir had their Sunday. The radio choir had their Sunday. Everybody had a Sunday. And we sung those old songs from the scriptures. Hosanna. What is it? It's a jubilant praise. It's a call to worship. It actually means we need help. It also means save us. This cry was made as Jesus made his way into the city of Jerusalem. Jesus knew what time it was. Jesus had read the prophecy of Daniel, chapter number 9 where it was prophesied that the Messiah would be cut off in the book of Daniel, chapter number 9, that the Messiah would be cut off. And it would be 70 years. And 70 years in captivity and that's concerning the Babylonian captivity. The children of Israel had been in captivity for 70 years. 
And the first 23 verses of Daniel chapter 9 deals with that. Daniel, the prophet, was inquiring of God, how long will it be? And he was repenting for Israel, for their sins. He was repenting because they backslid. And in verse 24 of Daniel chapter 9, it talks about uh, the 70 weeks. And to understand the return of Jesus and the triumphant entry, you have to look at end time events, the things that are going on now because we're in the church age according to Romans chapter number 11 it's called the fullness of the Gentiles God's time clock stopped God's time clock stopped see God has a different time clock than we have we think God's clock is like our clock, but God has his own time clock. That's why you study your Bible, read your Bible, to know where we are in God's time. And so Daniel, in his prophecy in chapter 9, he talks about the 70 weeks, God gives him this, and he gives him the plan for Israel. And these 70 weeks, according to verse number 24, we're right now just poised, and we're just waiting for the rapture of the church. God's hand clock, it stopped, and, and you'll understand better about uh, 483 years of the 490 years that we're getting ready to look at in Daniel chapter number 9. We're between 483 and 490. And God's hand clock is stopped when Jesus came in to Jerusalem to give us time to get saved. This is the time of the Gentiles. This is the church age. This is the fullness of the Gentiles. It's been over 2,000 years that God's time clock has been stopped. And it will start back up. And the last seven years will be the tribulation period. Can the church say amen? Yes. So here in verse number 24, it says, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. That's Jerusalem. To finish the transgressions and to make an end of sins. This is the rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ. He came unto his own, his own received him not. They rejected him as the Messiah, and to make reconciliation for iniquity. This was the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And to bring in everlasting righteousness, and that is the millennium, which will be 1,000 years of peace after the tribulation period and the battle of Armageddon then there'll be a thousand years and we will reign with him for 1,000 years. Can the church say amen? And to seal up the vision, this is verse 24 in Daniel 9, and prophesy and to anoint the most holy, and that deals with the temple of God. Verse 25, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem 
And that was the decree made by Artaxerxes the first uh, to Nehemiah to go and to uh, rebuild the walls uh, of the city of Jerusalem. So it says the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem. That was 445 B.C. And this was the starting of the 70 weeks uh, that God gave to Daniel. 70 weeks of years. 70 times 70 equals 490 years. 70, this starts the 70 weeks. He says, unto the Messiah, the prince, talking about Jesus, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. So that means 69 weeks of years. And then he goes on to say, the street shall be built again and the wall even in troublous times. He's referring to the time of Nehemiah, and you can read that in Nehemiah chapter number 2, verse 26. And after three score and two weeks, at 62 weeks of years, he says that Messiah will be cut off. He's talking about Jesus. He's talking about uh, they're going to crucify him. Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself and the people of the prince. This second prince is the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition. Uh, he says that the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city that was 70 A.D., when uh, the Babylonians came in and destroyed the temple at Jerusalem. They shall come to destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolation are determined. Verse 27, and ye shall confirm uh, he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now he is referring to the seven years of tribulation where the beast, the Antichrist, the son of perdition, shall confirm the covenant, the Mosaic covenant, uh, with many for one week, speaking about Israel. The one week is seven years, the tribulation. And he goes on to say, and in the midst of the week, in the middle of the seven years, after three and a half years, midway through the tribulation period, uh, he says that he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. What are you saying? I'm saying that uh, the Antichrist will stop the sacrifices. Uh-huh, and he will do an abominable thing according to Isaiah, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5. I don't know what the abominable thing will be, but some say he will sacrifice a swine, a pig, or something that was forbidden by Israel on the altar, and Israel will see him for who he really is because uh, they're still looking for the Messiah. The Jews, uh, amen, as a nation are still looking for Jesus. When they set their table at the head of the table, amen, they have a, a plate and the seat, amen, is turned up and that is for the Messiah. They're still looking for Jesus because they rejected him when he came. Amen. Can the church say amen? amen? And so in the middle of the week, Israel 
thinks that he is the Messiah, but the Antichrist, the son uh, of the devil, the man of sin, amen, will do something abominable. And their eyes will be opened and they will see him for who he is. He says that he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Hallelujah. Can the church say hallelujah? And for the overspring of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Hallelujah. Even unto the consummation, talking about the end of the tribulation period, which is the conclusion of Daniel's 70 weeks. The 70th week will be, amen, concluded. So it says, even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Amen. The final seven years after the rapture of the church, amen, is when we will hear the cry made. Amen. Uh, peace and safety. Uh, amen. There will be uh, a treaty made between, uh, amen, Israel. Uh, amen. And, uh, amen, that will let us know that we're right on the brink uh, of the coming of the Lord. Uh, amen. The Antichrist, amen, he made a covenant with the nation of Israel. Uh, amen. And he broke the covenant. Amen. Halfway through the tribulation period, uh, he put an end to the sacrifices and the offerings in the temple. Uh, he sets himself up. Uh, amen. On the throne. Uh, amen. As God. Uh, and had the people to worship him as God. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Uh, no wonder, amen, Paul wrote in 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter number 2 and verse number 4, saying, who opposes and exalted himself uh, above, above all that is called God, uh, or that is worshipped, uh, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, uh, showing himself that he is God. Uh, Amen. I know people, amen, today, amen, they're scared. Amen. They're looking around and they're seeing, amen, the events and it seems like the world is falling apart. Amen. They have many questions concerning the end times. They have many questions concerning the Antichrist. Amen. And are we going, amen, to have to go through the tribulation? Amen. Are we as Christians going to have to suffer through all the violence and the disasters of the earth? Well, in First Thessalonians chapter number five, amen, the word of God, it says, amen, that we, amen, it's not appointed unto us, amen, wrath, but we have been appointed unto salvation, amen, just like during the days of Noah, amen, God destroyed the whole world, amen, but he delivered Noah, amen, and his family, amen, that's how it will be, amen, God will deliver his church, amen, he will not allow us, amen, to suffer with the world, it's not a pointed unto us. Amen. Wrath. Can the church say amen? Amen. God said in Malachi 3.17 they shall be mine when I come to make up my jewels. I will spare them as a man his own son. Amen. The church amen was purchased with the blood of Jesus. Uh, amen. The Lord, uh, he 
has us, amen, in his hand. Can the church say hallelujah? Amen. When Jesus, when he came into, amen, just give me three more minutes. When Jesus, when he came into the city of Jerusalem, he was riding on a coat. Amen to God. Matthew was the only gospel writer. Amen. That told the story. Amen. That there was an ass, a female donkey, with there with their coat. Amen. The coat, amen, had never been ridden before. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. That's why Jesus, amen, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, amen, he rode into the city, riding on the coat, amen, the young donkey that had never been ridden before, amen, the disciples, they took off their garments and put them on the coat, oh, hallelujah, and they sat Jesus upon the coat, oh, praise God, and the people, amen, the city was in an uproar, 85,000 people there in the city to celebrate Passover, oh, praise God, and somebody said, who is this, what, who is this, got the city turned upside down, and somebody said, it's Jesus, oh, the prophet from Nazareth, hallelujah, he's coming in the name of the Lord, he's coming to bring salvation, he's coming to die on the cross, he's coming to lay down his life for the sins of the whole world. Somebody lift your hands uh, and tell him thank you. Oh, Lord, uh, tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. You didn't have to do it, uh, but you did. Uh, you didn't have to save me, uh, but you did. Uh, tell him thank you. Oh, Lord. Uh, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Mm, I want to thank you, Lord. You've been mighty good. Thank you, Lord. You brought me from a mighty long way. Say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He came in five days before his death. Hallelujah. They said, Oh, shut. Oh, blessed is the one that comes in the name of the Lord. Five days later, they said, crucify. Same people that said, Hosanna said, crucify. Give us Barabbas. But it was all a part of God's plan. Jesus knew what time it was. He knew it was the time of his entry 483 years into the prophecy of Daniel he came in on time no man, no man knows the day nor the hour when the Lord will 
return for his church. But somebody say, it's going to be right on time. Everybody whose name is written in the Lamb's book of life. It doesn't record deaths, only births. All those that have been born again of the water and of the spirit. All of them that have met the requirements that he had. Whether it be innocence, conscience, human government, promise, law, grace. All those that have met the requirements of their dispensation. Born. Received God according to his dictates during their dispensation. He records the birth. Everybody's name that was written in the Lamb's Book of Life. He said, when were they written, preacher? Before the foundation of the world. Look at somebody and tell them, my name was written there before the foundation of the world. I'm not, I'm not teaching and preaching unconditional eternal security. Because I don't believe once saved, always saved. There's too much scripture that lets you know you can be lost if you don't do the things that God is calling for in his word. Even the great apostle to the Gentiles, the apostle Paul, he said that he had to keep his flesh under lest he be a castaway he was saying that if he didn't keep his flesh under, he would be lost. He would be in hell fire for, throughout eternity, burning and never been able to burn up or be consumed, but being able to feel all the pain. He's coming back just like he came before. He's coming back for the church. Then after this 70, seven years to conclude the 70th week of years of Daniel, he's coming again, but he's coming as the lion of the tribe of Judah to judge the world, and the saints will be coming with him. Ten thousands of the saints riding on white horses. Somebody say, he's talking about me. Valley of Armageddon in the Valley of Jezreel where the Lord says that the blood in that valley will be up to the horse's bridle. It will be for a hundred miles it will be nothing but blood up to the horse's bridle. That's how vicious that battle will be. That's why the forces of evil now are mounting themselves for that battle. They're going to be on the side of the Antichrist. But tell somebody, I won't be here. I won't be here. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord says that we'll be somewhere in the chambers of God. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord said, come and see. Amen. And we'll be able to see the destruction and we'll be able to to see the wrath of God being poured out on the children of disobedience, but we'll be safe in the chambers of the Lord. God bless you on the day. Clap your hands and give him a Hosanna praise. Is there someone here today after hearing the word of the Lord? You want to be ready want to be ready when the Lord returns. Amen. You want to be on the side. Amen. God already knows in his foreknowledge who's going to be saved. And in predestination there is destiny. That means that you play a part in the predetermined will of God, the foreknowledge of God.
them he knew, he foreknew. He's God. He's omniscient. That's one of the natural attributes of God is omniscience. God bless you, young man. Amen. We had a good time bowling yesterday. I got the chance to get to know him. His name is Jawan. Amen. God is good. Tell somebody, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, come on up and get strength, my brother. Amen. Strength for the journey. God bless you, young man. Amen. He was bowling yesterday, too. Hallelujah. Is there someone else? Uh, amen. Hallelujah. I want to give you an opportunity. Water is ready. Clothing for the change of your apparel. Baptize you. God bless you. Amen. That's the mother there. She went down in Jesus' name a couple Sundays ago and her. Uh, amen. God blessed her mightily. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep coming. God bless you. Amen going to be much longer, but we just want to give you an opportunity. Amen. It's called an altar call. Amen. God bless you, Sister Lanessa and Sister Whitney. Amen. Enjoyed you in the fellowship on yesterday. Amen. God bless all of you. Is there others? Anyone else? Amen. That would like to. Amen. Praying for you. You know that, Sister Wade. We're going to come on down for prayer. Amen. Is there anyone else? We need some more help here at the altar, I believe, today. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's right, Mother. Come on up and help us out today, Mother Patrick. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. You can come right on over here. Mother Patrick can pray for you right over here. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. God loves you. God loves you. God loves you. And no matter who don't love you, God loves you. Amen. If God says, hallelujah, that he loves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only, only begotten son. Whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have ever lasting life. God bless you. Amen. Couple. Yeah, they came old yesterday. The whole family was there. Amen. All right. Amen. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Amen. God is good. God is good. God bless you. Amen. We love you in Jesus' name. Love you in Jesus' name. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Whatever you need, God's got it. Whatever you need. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's got it. Don't you worry. Don't you fret. Mm. Don't you worry. Don't you fret. I said, don't you worry and don't you fret. God never failed us yet. God's got you. God's going to take care of it. God's going to take care of it. God's going to take care of it. Turn it over to Jesus. He'll work it out. <laughs> Won't he do it? Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Lord. Bless. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Without him, I can do nothing. But all things are possible to them that believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Help thou my unbelief. I believe. I believe that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all. I can ask or think according to the power that worketh in, in us. The power that worketh in us power that worketh in me, the power that worketh in you. That's the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Somebody say, I'm going to make it.
Somebody say, I got to make it. Hallelujah. Got to make it. Say it again. I got to make it. Hallelujah. Be sure, very sure that your anchor holds grips the solid rock. That rock is Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God. I thank you. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for coming. Hallelujah. They sang the Psalm 118. Amen. The Hallelujah song. They were singing the Hallelujah song when he came into Jerusalem. Hallelujah. He had traveled 15 miles. Amen. Walking. Amen. 3,500. Amen. Feet in altitude. And when he came into the city, Turned the city upside down. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He broke the paradigm. Hallelujah. He broke the paradigm. Amen. Folk, amen, was used to seeing a king riding on a stallion full of uh, splendor, amen, arrogance, and, and pomp. But he broke the paradigm. The king of kings, he came in meek and lowly, riding on a donkey. They say, who is this? Hallelujah. Oh, at the coronation, oh, hallelujah. They had to, amen, cut the palm trees. Amen. They had to climb up to the top, amen, of the tree and cut the limbs at the top. And they strode them in his path. Amen. They didn't have nothing else, so they took the clothes off their back and threw them in the path. Somebody say it was a coronation. I've seen coronations. Amen. I've been to Rome, Italy. I've been to the Vatican. I've seen the thousands, amen, that come, the millions when we were there for the coronations. Hallelujah. Oh, but there was none like my Jesus coming in. Look at my Jesus. I got to quit. Stepping on in. Amen. God bless you. Clap your hands and give God some praise for the word on today. Amen. Amen. Yes. Can we give God praise for that word on today? Hosanna. Hosanna. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I'm really looking forward to Resurrection Sunday. And today, Bishop turned our eyes as we look toward Easter next week, as we go into Holy Week, Passion Week, it should be Jesus every day. Let us not come here next week looking for somebody to come and tell us, but let's read all week, let's fast, let's come into the house of the Lord for Holy Communion on Tuesday, and let's come ready, hallelujah, to offer God the sacrifice of praise. I don't know about you, but I'm not coming in dry. I'm coming in to thank him, hallelujah, for the sacrifice on the cross hallelujah this is like the biggest day in our faith the biggest day there's nothing big all of our belief is hinged on the cross all everything that we believe everything that we have hope in for the future hallelujah it, it all hinges hallelujah on what he did on calvary hallelujah hallelujah i'm determined not to be distracted not distracted by anything and you better know the distractions are coming you better know this week the devil is going to try everything to try to distract us hallelujah from thinking about the sacrifice hallelujah but i'm determined to set my eyes hallelujah on him this week Hallelujah, and to come in here ready to thank him. Hallelujah, to offer him the sacrifice of praise for what he did that gave us hope for a future. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that, that God would trouble the waters, that it would be an Easter to remember as we bring in our friends and family. Hallelujah, at this time I'm gonna call on Minister Finney. Want me to go ahead and do it? Okay, let me pull it up.
Amen. Certainly we praise God for the bowling outing. I know he's already been um, touching on it. I see it here in the announcements. Amen. It was a wonderful fellowship. Amen. Let me see. Brother Rodney. <laughs> You're throwing them curveballs. Look. <laughs> Minister Phillips, where's she at? She was like, I think you've been practicing. Because yo, yo, the way you was hitting them, it was going literally like this and then just right to the middle and then he just somehow got a strike I don't know but huh he said they was flying the pins was just like boom so I'm gonna give you your props I'm not gonna be a hater today okay I won't be a hater today sister Mickey was tearing it up she didn't come to play where's sister June at <laughs> she didn't come to play sister Sight. uh Ricky didn't come to play. Sister Ethelyn, look, <laughs> mother, she was hitting them. Look, she hit a, a spare right at the end. Won't he do it? <laughs> God is good. So we we had a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun yesterday. Um, our next full church fellowship will be the second Saturday in May. If you would like to purchase a T-shirt, those are available every Sunday for $15, you can get your own New Vision AFA t-shirt. And you can get the Brotherhood, what is it? All right, I am my brother's keeper t-shirts for sale as well. This Tuesday, we have Holy Communion, amen, amen. So thankful to be able to do it together again. Amen. We were doing them virtual communions. Yes, we're going to be in here. He said she's going to do a short class, no foot washing, but we still going to shout and give God a praise. Amen. First Lady is reminding us that we wear white on communion night. And if you are a minister, you need to be dressed up. Yes, you need to be dressed up. Amen. Friday, April 29th through Saturday, April 30th, uh, Jesus is Alive, Region 5. This will be at the Greater Bible Way Temple in Jackson, Michigan, and our own bishop will be preaching and we will be singing. This is a, yes, this is for the International Christian Education Association of the PAW, so it's international, yes? And uh, if you would like to register for that, you can do so at the PAW website, and they also have registration on site. New Converts class is going on every Monday from 7.30 to 8. Is um, Elder Morgan teaching that? Amen. So if you have questions about the doctrine and about being filled with the Holy Ghost and all of that stuff, valid questions. We all have them. Amen. I still, I always like, listen, I just read this. What does it mean? <laughs> and that sermon you gave today, that was strong meat. So if you have, if you have questions, questions as you get... Um, in the church and you just want to know some things, join that prayer line Monday, 7.30 to 8 o'clock. Your questions can be answered. He said, come to Bible class every Tuesday <laughs> as well. Amen. Um, Monday, August 1st through August 6th, that's the PAW convention. We all know. Amen. It's going to be in St. Louis. And you can find all of the information about that at www.pawinc.com. Dot org. Your registration is non-refundable. So if you register, you cannot get that money back, but you can make it there. It's going to be worthwhile. Amen. It's always fun. And I think that's it for those announcements. Yes, we are still collecting for Ukraine. Amen. Yes, we're trying to get to a thousand dollars. I think we're at like six hundred. I'm going. I'm going right to now. donate another hundred. Yes, so we're trying to send a thousand, at least a thousand dollars over to Ukraine. If you've been watching the news, there we go. If you've been watching the news, you know they need support, and that is our. Um, we are the hands and feet of Jesus. That is our call to be giving. And you can't listen when you give; it'll, it'll come back. That's what we talked about before, so we don't have to worry about that. But we are collecting for Ukraine. Also. All right. Well, there we just got 250. 100. Amen. We are we close. Okay. Gotcha. And uh, lastly here, 
the Brotherhood will be doing a cleanup this Saturday. Amen. Right before Easter. Brotherhood, where's that? I am my brother's keeper. Come on now. Where's that? Where's that energy? What was it? Amen. We're gonna keep this yard on Saturday. Hanging light bulbs, doing things as we prepare. Amen. Yes, outside wear your dirty clothes. And it shouldn't take long. If we come together, it, it literally will just be a small amount of time. Make sure that um, Brother Noah has your information so that he can send out a blast or Brother Rick has your information. One of them, they are over the, the men and they will send you a message to let you know. It'll probably be 10 a.m. I'm gonna throw it out there. Something. But it will be there on set on Saturday. Amen. If you're if you're if you want to be a part of the dance ministry, we started last week. We will also be meeting today, immediately following service. And next Sunday, we will also have an Easter egg hunt. Let's give God praise for that. Amen. So little ones will be able to have fun with that um, after church on Sunday. Okay, I think that's all the announcements. Um, before we dismiss, I do want to say happy birthday to Mother Moore, who's 82 today. Yeah. Woo! Sister Carla, she turned 41 on Wednesday. Yes, honey. That's grown, look. Almost. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. How old, look? <laughs> Do we gotta be? All right. Um, and Minister Finney, happy birthday. And Sister Towns, happy birthday. They all have a birthday on the same day. Their birthdays are on April 6th. Isn't that crazy? So we have to show the love. Yeah. Amen. We celebrate you guys. Happy birthday. Amen. If you joined us online or on the phone line, Thank you for joining us today. Um, and we thank you for your like gifts you share. and your offerings. <laughs> if you're watching online, go on and press like, go on and press share, and join us. First Lady will be on in one hour. And you can press like and share there too. And we thank you for those of you who do do that. We do see you and we do appreciate what you do. Um, if you would yes, like yes, to yes. give, um, you can do so uh, via Cash App. We are dollar sign New Vision AFA. You can give via Givelify. We are New Vision and Apostolic Faith Assembly located in Niles, Michigan. And our pastor is Sergeant Bishop Carlton D. Burrell. And you can also mail in your tithe and offering to P.O. Box 878, Niles, Michigan, 49120. God bless you for being a blessing to this house. If you're in the house of the Lord on today, you can give on your way out. Deacon Woods will collect your tithe and offering in the brown box. Just drop it in there. One of our ushers will give you a, a tithe envelope if you need that. Amen. And our usher that will be dismissing us as we dismiss row by row is Minister Phillips on today. And she will make sure that we get out safely and quickly. Amen. If there's nothing else, we're going to go ahead and dismiss in prayer. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Today we lift our hands and say, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hallelujah, worthy, hallelujah, worthy are you, Lord, of all the praise. Hallelujah, all the glory and all the honor. Lord, it belongs to you. We thank you for what you did for us. Hallelujah, we thank you, Lord, for the sacrifice that you made for us. Hallelujah, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and you continually do 
for us. We don't deserve it, Lord, but somehow, for some reason, Lord, you have chosen, you have called, Lord, and you have prepared a place even for us. You sacrificed your life, hallelujah, so that we could be with you for an eternity. And this morning, we say thank you, Lord, and we'll be thinking of you all week, and we'll be thanking you all week, Lord, for what you have done. Lord, you are the center of our joy. Hallelujah. You're the one that gives us a hope for the future, Lord. It is only because of you that we live and move and have our being. And Lord, today we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for your sacrifice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy of all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Amen and amen.